The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Karen, I hear Max is having some trouble with his Nintendo Switch. Is he? I don't have any problems with my Nintendo Switch. You'd better go check on him. Okay. Max, what's wrong? Why are you so sad? Well, I've been playing my Switch pretty much 24-7 since I bought it, and I've developed this debilitating thumb cramp that's rendered me a cripple. I don't know what to do about this analog stick. Really? I haven't had that problem considering the size of my hands could be compared to that of a pygmy marmoset. Do you have a plan for your thumb cramps? Well, I've been scouring the dark corners of the internet and I think I found a solution. It's this low-cost offshore hand surgery place. You know what they say, if a controller doesn't quite fit your hands, modify your hands to fit the controller. That sounds like a terrible idea. Did somebody say idea? I did? Yes, she said that. Well, I've got an idea that's better than hand surgery and much less messy. What I'm going to do is 3D print an add-on for the Joy-Con so we can move the analog stick to the proper position. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right. I'm opening up the right Joy-Con. All right, so the right Joy-Con it has an analog stick that is not in the right position. So our thought is to make it so it is in the right position. Oh, looks like they just gave up on security once you get through the outer layer. Oh, okay, this is good news. This is gonna be your analog stick right there. So this has a uh, finger connector right here for when it slides into the switch. But the thing that is heartening, as opposed to being disheartening, is that the analog stick appears to be its own module. It should actually pop out. There we go. Ta -da! Oh, they like bent the can around this. Like all Nintendo cares about, man, is like profits. It's almost like they're a corporation with shareholders or something. They should like just trade the Switch for coffee, man. The older PlayStation Portable, it had a fairly straightforward analog stick. There were four leads. Two of them were positive and negative for lack of a better term. And then the other two were the analog wipers. Then the PlayStation Vita, there's like a digital potentiometer. Well, it's not a digital potentiometer. It's probably a, not a magnetometer either, probably a Hall effect sensor. So the analog stick would move magnets around and then it would detect the position and proximity of the magnets and determine what the tilt was from there. So this one, it has five pins, which seems like that's more than it would need if it was simple. So they've probably overcomplicated this one a little bit too. I have never seen an analog stick that works this way. When you move the analog stick, it moves these fingers back and forth. See, well, this one's easier to move. See how it goes up and down like that? And then it presses against this? Ah, uh, what, is, what is changing when it does that? Maybe the resistance? Oh yeah, okay, it would change the resistance. You can make resistors um, by uh, printing carbon on a trace like this. So see how it can go back and forth on that? The closer it is to here, then here would be a difference in resistance. So basically when you move this up and down, uh, this side would be constant, but this side would change. This is so unconventional of a design. I'm not sure if we can actually replace this with a standard analog stick. So what we might have to do is actually just take this stick and move it instead of like replacing it with something else. Okay, so the Joy-Con normally goes here. Right, so what I'm thinking is we make some kind of uh, spacer thing, right? So it goes between the Joy-Con and the Switch. The problem with this is your thumb wants to do this to go for the right analog stick, not this. This is awkward. This part here is plastic. This is metal, but so I think we could maybe 3D print this uh, matching plate. So we could 3D print something that would slide into the Switch. Maybe we could actually do that first, like design that piece, make sure it fits, and then build out from there. Because if we design if we design the piece that goes into it, then we could also design the piece that goes around it. Because we have to do a uh, 
male and then female like to link these together. So that's all I'm really proposing is we just space it out and uh, put the analog stick right there and have like, oh, I don't know, like a no more than one inch wide uh, spacer. So this will plug into the spacer and the spacer will plug into this. Now this won't technically be connected, but does it work with only if this one's plugged in and this one's loose? Okay, here is a fully charged switch. All right, let's put on the left Joy-Con. Oh, I gotta turn up the volume so I can hear the noise. All right. Wait, it looks like it's working with this one disconnected. I can move the menus. Oh, no, update, uh, just start software. Press left and right on the controller. You can also play with the Joy-Con detached. All right, so it looks like you either need to have both of them connected or both of them detached. All right, so the challenges that we're gonna face so far with this mod are, we have to make a null connector on both sides. So these things are, they're, they're connected, but they're not actually electrically connected because there's a, a port down there where they connect. Uh, yeah, so we need like a null spacer here that's quite narrow. And then over here, we need a, uh, a male piece to go in there and then a female piece to click on this. So basically you'd put an adapter onto this or just build this out into one piece. The other challenge with that is, I mean, these things are charged by the console, right? So if this isn't actually connected, it's not gonna charge. And that's tricky because little fingers there that actually attach to the console. And uh, it's pretty small ribbon cable. How many pins are there? Looks like nine. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe it's not the end of the road just yet, like boys to men. I mean, we could do this. We could extend the cable out a little bit. Would that give us enough room? I think you could almost get away with it like this. See, you don't have to rewire that cable. It's got enough slack. Just barely would fit. Like that. Yeah, that would make it a lot easier to play. Well, that would work because then all we, all we would have to 3D print is a spacer interface between this and this with a spot for the joystick. And then the only thing we need to rewire are the five connections here, which would be a lot easier than rewiring this 10 pin connection. Well, in that case, that makes this mostly a design challenge. We just have to design a piece that fits in between this with a mounting point for the analog stick and then very carefully solder five wires, which it might look tricky, but I can do it. So this Joy-Con extension is mostly just 3D printing. However, there is a challenge that we must face, and that is with this flat flex ribbon cable on the joystick itself. It's quite thin. It's a 0.5 millimeter pitch. Pitch is the distance between centers of pins. And there is a connector on the PCB. However, if we try to desolder that connector, we'll probably ruin it. And we can't solder to this flat flex ribbon cable because it's not actually metal. It's a uh, conductive ink that they make the traces with. So what I want to do is I want to try to find a connector like this. So I think I'm going to order one off Newark Element 14 so we can plug it in here to the flat flex and then manually put wires from the connector over to the PCB. So we, we will remove this connector. It'll probably just die in the process. And then we can just wire a connector from here directly over to there. So we'll put the joystick in place and we'll just have a connector hanging off here in space. And then we'll just run some wires over and that should give us a connection we need. The other wires actually, uh, they will reach their destinations no problem, even with the extension. So thanks to that slack, this project is mostly possible. If we had to rewire all of these, probably wouldn't work at all. I mean, I guess since we have to remove that connector, we might as well try to desolder it anyway and see if it survives. I kind of doubt that it will, but it's worth a shot. And in the meantime, we can order a spare. Luckily, there's some test points here that I can put solder on to make most of the connections we need. So soldering this part's gonna be a lot easier than on the, uh, the connector itself. The main challenge will be if there's enough room for the wires and the header to be moved. I'm hoping there will be. Hey, Mr. Donut Head Man, who's trying to kill you? I don't know, but they better not.
Hello, Medical Tourism Board. Um, it turns out I'm gonna need that hand shrinking surgery after all. Ben can't do anything with my switch. Stop! Oh. Why use a painful, expensive, dangerous hand shrinking surgery when you can use this? You did it! Ergonomically designed based off the way your thumb actually moves. I won't even have to cut off my hands now. <laughs> I think we kept, I didn't laugh, so you should be able to get a yeah, cut in there. Yeah, should be able to get a cut in there. Here's how it works. Take the Joy-Con 9000 and plug it into your Switch. Then play your Zelda game, because that's all you can do. Let's try it. Cool. <sighs> That was incredible. Ah, oh, my thumb. It can reach the stick manually. It's not under my knuckle like it used to be. It doesn't have to awkwardly move down. Wow. Now Max can win Zelda. I don't have to go to an obscure part of Canada anymore. Isn't the whole country pretty <laughs> obscure? <laughs> I had to go to Nipponese, Saskatchewan. <laughs> well, this, this thumb stick is in, in a better place. <laughs> it's dead? Yeah, it, it, it's working out pretty well so far. It feels like a real game controller mm -hmm. now? It feels like a real game controller for, uh, for normal sized hands, which I'm happy about. I mean, I feel like however large your hands are, it is weird to keep doing that, going back and forth between those two positions. Oh man, some goblins. Running into a goblin, goblin army. They were elves once. Oh, and I'm dead. This analog stick isn't improving my performance, unfortunately. Well, Karen, we got the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con extended, and we put the analog stick where it belongs. This looks pretty slick. Yeah. Well, you did a great job, Ben, even though Thanks. those tiny, tiny pins were very difficult to solder to. So we're gonna have the 3D print files for the extension online, but just to warn you, it is very difficult to solder. You're talking about half millimeter pitch sizes between wires. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Do you have any ideas for other Switch mods to improve this fancy new handheld console that we have? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash tbhs. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll switch you later. That was a terrible pun. That's not even a, not that's even not a even pun. pun. Yeah. How are we gonna switch them? Oh, that's what they look like. They're so cute. Do you have a solution for your cramp problem? Damn it. <laughs> Turns out Ben's not gonna be able to modify my switch. I'm gonna have to shrink my hands. <laughs> Do you have a plan for your cramp pop, pop, cramp plop? <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> Fail vlog. Hello, Ecuador? Yeah, so. <laughs> the only way to save our universe is if Olivia Dunham can go through that time portal. Blah, blah, blah. You know what they say, if you can't modify a controller, modify your hand. <laughs> What's this stuffed animal you got with you? That's Mr. Fancy Dancy, and he's real. Yeah, really lame. It's this offshore hand surgery place that's really cheap. Looks great. You know what they say? <laughs> I feel like Aloy looking at metal animals. 